We got a new addition at the Bulldog Farm. We're gonna talk about one of the top killers of nursing puppies, aspiration pneumonia, and how to prevent it. We're also gonna talk about a condition that can destroy the look of your Frenchie's ears, a rural hematoma. They must be treated properly. And the puppy's eyes opened up. My puppies live in the incubator the first two to three weeks. I feed every two to three hours. So after they nurse, I like to do the bowels, get all the pee and poop out of them, then get them back in the incubator. That way when I open the incubator in a couple hours, I have clean, healthy, happy puppies. Holding the legs firm, allowing him to push out the poop. Without holding those legs firm, you're never gonna get this result. You're gonna wanna learn to master this technique. I call it hand bottoming. It's way more efficient than the mother. This white is a lot softer than her tongue. It gives you a look at the puppy's health by being able to identify the poop. I'm way more efficient at it. It cuts down on the parasite burden. Parasites are transferred through feces. And it improves your mom's overall gut health considering that poop is in this wipe and not her stomach. So those are the many reasons why hand bottoming, hand bottoming is the preferred method for me. And Junebug doesn't like to clean our pups anyways. Next, I'm gonna show you guys what I call the fingertip technique. <clears throat> I don't bottle feed my pups. Bottle feeding is the easiest way to make your puppies aspirate and then get aspiration pneumonia. So I prefer to tube feed or syringe feed with the fingertip method. There's also the sponge method. I'll teach you that another So time. this little boy, I want to make sure he's gaining. He hasn't been nursing as good as I want. A lot of times he's just laying there fake nursing. So we're going to supplement feed him. And I'm going to show you the fingertip method. Fingertip method. Put your finger in his mouth. You want to get it down there so he's sucking on your finger like it's a nipple, which is going to, for the most part, block, block him from aspirating. And you're just going to slowly drip the syringe up under your finger and slowly drip it down into the mouth. I don't really recommend you try this technique unless somebody has taught you right next to you. So do this at your own risk. It is a more advanced technique. I'm just sharing with you my technique and trying to talk it out so you can understand what I'm doing as best as possible. passage.
I used a clean, sterile, new 20 gauge needle. I lanced it low where the blood was filling up in the ear. And then just gently massage all the blood out. Taking care of you little pecan. I always take care of you girl. You can get these biggoldbulldogs.com. These wipes have chlorhexidine in it, which will clean and disinfect the ear. It also has aloe in it, which should give her some relief. What a good little patient you are, little pecan pie. Pecan pie is my little 14 pound fluffy carrier who we just bred to one of Freaka Chew's best sons, Freak Villa, a full fluffy chocolate and tan. Look forward to that. I'll be hopefully confirming her in the next three weeks or so. So now let's talk about how this happened. How did this hematoma happen? Well, hematomas happen from the dog's violently shaking its head back and forth. Well, why does a dog violently shake its head back and forth? Typically an ear infection, but as you can see, Pecan doesn't have an ear infection. What she does have that I noticed was over here, she has a bite from Magilla Gorilla. They had a little skirmish out there the other day. They were getting a little rough, whatever things happen, they're dogs. So he bit her around here, which was making her ear not feel good and making her shake her head, causing her hematomas in both ears. All right, now that we got the ear drained, we got the ear cleaned. Now we're gonna go ahead and tape this one up also. A, to make sure the ear holds its shape. Sometimes after you get rid of the hematomas, the ear kind of wants to crumble up. So you want it, the ear to hold its shape and you want it to stay in shape so that it can continue to drain. You don't want it to hang down and then fill back up with blood. Best you use some kind of little crutch something to hold the shape of the ear, and just some medical tape is fine. Corso here at the Bulldog Farm, and his name is Drago. He's what's called a Formentino in the Corso world, which is the same as a blue fawn with Frenchies. The little Malibu Singleton has gone on to his new I home. I am going to be repeating that and breeding. don't forget, I offer full mentorship on all full rights purchases. Now that we're going into day 13, this is when you're going to want to adjust your incubator's temperature. At this point, you can start bringing that temperature down. The puppies can regulate body temperature now. So you're going to want to bring that down from 86, 85 down to around 81 or 80. And this is also when the puppies start opening their eyes. everybody and we're treating pecan pie as a rural hematoma. You saw we've already drained it to get the blood out. I've had to drain it. You're messing up the shot, Pantera. Pantera, come on, you're messing up the shot. So I've already had to drain it a couple times, but the good thing is every time I've had to drain it, the blood has been more watery colored, more watered down, less bright red. The bright red um, indicates fresh trauma, so you don't want to continue to see that fresh red blood. Um, it's a good sign that the blood is getting thinner. So we're gonna continue to drain it. And now I'm gonna treat it with a warm compress. Warm compresses got it really hot. You're gonna wanna, um, the key to getting it really hot really quick is the microwave. Obviously not too hot to burn the dog, but um, get it as hot as you can. 
because it's going to get cold fast. So warm compresses are very, very, very effective for many different things, treating many different things. We talked about mastitis the other day. Treating mastitis with warm compresses is huge. If you get mastitis, you're going to want to do as many warm compresses as you can. I mean, every 10 to 15 minutes, keep doing those warm compresses. Same thing with this. Um, this is a little, it's treating it's different than mastitis. I don't feel like I need to do as many warm compresses, but the warm compresses are really gonna help her as far as relief and to stop these ears from filling back up. We're gonna do this for a little bit, and then the next problem is stopping her from shaking her head. So her shaking her head is what started this whole thing. If you look at Pecan's ears, she's got no ear infection. What she did have is a bite right here from Magilla Gorilla. That's what was irritating her and making her shake her head, which is how we ended up here. So now we need to stop her from continuing to shake them and making it fill back up. I tried turning her into a little Doberman, but little Pecan Pie doesn't have any. She shook this free. So that's why I had to get more aggressive. Because we don't want to create any more trauma. This all started by her shaking her head, which creates trauma to the blood vessels, which breaks the blood vessels. When the blood vessels break, the ear fills up with blood. So we don't want that to continue to happen. So after we do the warm compresses, what we're gonna do is try to stabilize these ears from her continuing to shake them. How are we gonna do that? Take an old sock. Or a new sock. A really expensive new sock that you were supposed to wear on a ski trip that you never took. and they're flat, open and flat. They're pinned back. And then to make sure how you can check if it's too tight, you wanna to wanna to be able to put two fingers in here. And if you can get two fingers all the way around, you know what I mean, like this, you're good to go. It's not too tight. You want it tight. The compression is what's gonna help. A sock is amazing for this, A, because it almost feels like it was designed for it, but it's breathable. So it's breathable, it's gonna give her compression. And if you've been following me already, you know that Pecan Pie's nickname is Thug Life. So I don't think it gets any more Thug Life than this Pecan Pie. Make sure you're following me on all my socials, Big Bone Bulldog Farm on Instagram, Big Bone Bulldogs on TikTok. That's where you can watch Pecan Pie live, running around my thousand square foot puppy playground, acting like a little thug, doing her little thug walk. I do have Pecan Pie on Clavamox also right now, some antibiotics to treat that from the inside. So let's recap on this whole process. We identified the auroral hematoma by seeing the blown up ear like a pillow. That happens from the dog shaking its head. You gotta find out why the dog was initially shaking its head. Like I told you, typically it's gonna be an ear infection. This time it wasn't an ear infection. When it's not an ear infection, it's typically a bite. She had a little bite wound right here, which was causing her to shake her head. When she shakes her head, it causes trauma to the blood vessels. The blood vessels break. The ear fills up with blood. So we had to get that blood out. You saw how we drained the ear. I used a 20 gauge syringe to drain the blood out, clean the ear out, treat it with warm compresses, and now we wanna stabilize this ear so that she doesn't cause any more trauma. You might have to drain it a couple more times. When you're draining it, make sure that the blood is getting watery, more watered down each time, that you don't have fresh red blood. If you do, you got a problem that needs addressed. You're, you're, not, you're not making progress. So that's fresh trauma blood. You wanna avoid that. You, you, gotta, you gotta address that if that's happening. Otherwise, you're on the right path. Drain it a few times, do warm compresses, stabilize it, and hopefully your dog's gonna recover. If, but as always, this is not medical advice. Take your dog to your vet and let's see what they're doing.
today's day 14, so tomorrow they'll be two weeks old. That means it's deworming time. This will be their first deworming dose as a puppy, so we start them off with pyrantal. These puppies aren't even one pound. They're all under one pound, so they're going to get a base dose of 0.2. I'm going to use a 1 ml syringe. 1 ml syringe, fill it up to 0.2, stick it in the mouth to press the plunger. It's just that easy. Now we'll go ahead and repeat this again in two weeks. For more deworming information and full protocol, check back to one of my previous videos that I've done on deworming. Today's day 15, and at this point, we can take out Junebug's staples. We got our staple removal tool. Watch out, Drago. Come on, Junebug, get on your belly. Drago, get out of here. Get out of here. All right, you can get these staple removal tools on Amazon for five bucks. So, don't go to your vet to get the staples removed. You're just stressing out your dog. You're wasting your time. It just doesn't make sense. Five bucks on Amazon. And just get up under the staple. And squeeze. One. Two. You want to get it right there on the tip of the tool to really pop it out. This one's kind of bent. Just get the tool under there. there we go. Junebug, you're good, mama. Couple more. Look at that, Junebug staples are all gone. Now we're just gonna clean it up with some of our dragon's blood. There's also some sutures in here. I'm gonna give those a couple more days. Let the body kind of reject them, push them out, make it a little bit easier. And then I'll remove the rest of those sutures if needed. Good girl, Junebug. <laughs> trouble with these pecan pie ears. I think I might have left out a few details to give you guys the full picture of what's going on here and why I've been treating it the way I've been treating it. So pecan pie, I just bred her, remember? So she's got puppies in here. So we have to treat her as she has puppies in here. So that limits the meds that we can give her. She's on Clavamox because Clavamox is the only med you can give a nursing mother or a puppy. So she's on Clavamox, a wide spectrum antibiotic. It's gonna treat this from the inside. But we've been trying to drain it, and we have drained it, but it just keeps filling back up. No matter what I do, it keeps filling back up. So, I got these drains. These drains came in. 
Look at how big that is. Look at how much. I would have to make an incision to shove this in. Then it has these spikes. It's gonna sit in that ear. It's gonna cause all kinds of trauma. Then I'm gonna have to make a bigger incision to get it out. So I decided not to go with the drains. What a vet, an experienced, a good vet, a good clinic, what they would do is they would just make a cut. You're gonna have to make a cut to get that drain out. So why not just make a cut, let everything drain out, pack it, allow it to drain out. Sometimes they'll put one little suture in there, but that's not even needed. It'll heal on its own. But the problem with me doing that is I can't sedate pecan pie. They would typically sedate her so they can make that good, clean, deep incision to open up the ear and let everything drain out. I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't get these drains in. That's gonna cause way too much trauma. I came up with another plan. Let me also add in, these plans don't just come out of my head. I have a handful of general practice vets that I have open communication with. I have a handful of reproductive vets I have open communication with. I have a handful of reproduction nurses I have open communication with. I've been dating someone that has 20 years medical experience. She managed an animal 24 hour animal emergency hospital. Emergency hospitals see the worst of the worst. And she's right there overseeing everything. She has many different specialty license. She oversees the treatment plans of all the different doctors. She has good relationships with all different doctors that she can additionally ask questions if I needed. So I lean on all these other people, medical professionals, for their opinions before I formulate my treatment for my dogs. So this is not just stuff I'm pulling out of the air. This is the same treatment that medical professionals would treat the dogs with if they were in the vet office. Like I said, if she didn't have puppies in her, they would slice that open, we'd let it drain out, we'd be good to go. But she does have puppies in her. So what I decided to do, I got these catheters. So I got these catheters. I just got them in this morning. It's a 18 gauge, no, sorry, it's a, yes, it's an 18 gauge catheter. It's pretty long. So we're gonna go in with the catheter. I can do that, I can get the, I can make an incision with this catheter. I just can't make a full incision with a scalpel. So I'll be able to get in there, and then you see this? This is similar, what's this remind you of? What's this remind you of? So now we have a drain right here and we have a way to insert it and it's a lot smaller. It's gonna cause a lot less trauma. I've noticed that it's pretty long, so I'm thinking let's cut, let's cut this. Let's cut this so it's about that long. Slide it back on. So now we're gonna use this catheter. We're gonna go in at the lower area of where the blood is pooling. Then we're gonna pull the needle back out and we're gonna leave the catheter inserted so everything can drain out. I'm gonna use some surgical medical glue to keep it inserted. I'm gonna tape it down. I'm gonna pack it with a bunch of gauze for everything to drain out. And we're gonna stabilize it really good. And I think this is gonna be our solution to draining pecans pie's ears and keeping these puppies safe. Let's go for it. Mm.
that wraps up day 16 in this episode. Next episode, we'll kick off on day 17, and we got a new product to check out. The guys over at Clean Guard sent me their new system. Are you familiar with the WYSIWASH? Well, this is supposed to be better and more affordable. See you guys next time.